After one day of being under Hezbollah fire on Israel's northern border with Lebanon, I'm not surprised to hear that two senior Hezbollah terrorists have been eliminated in airstrikes deep into the Lebanese territory. Iran seems to be disappointed with Hezbollah's poor performance in recent days, while everyone is wondering what Israel's response to Sunday morning's barrage of missiles and drones will be. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 194th day of Israel's war with Hamas, Hezbollah, and the many other proxy groups sponsored by Iran. In the last 24 hours, the IDF eliminated two senior Hezbollah officials in surgical airstrikes. The first was the commander of the coastal sector of the Shiite terrorist organization Ismail Youssef Baz. The second was Muhammad Hussein Musafa Savari, who served as the commander of the rocket unit in the western sector with the Raduran force. Prior to Israeli strikes, two explosive drones that had been launched from Lebanon hit the Bet Hillel area of the Galilee, resulting in three Israelis being wounded. Additionally, a barrage of 10 rockets were fired at the Israeli community of Kiryat Shmona, causing some damage but no casualties. This is because the residents of Kiryat Shmona, like most Galilee communities, were evacuated months ago and are still waiting to return to their homes. In addition to that, me and my team, as we were filming in the northern Galilee, were in the middle of these Hezbollah attacks only yesterday, with several rockets landing near us as my crew and I were filming the latest episode of My State, which will be posted this weekend. Stay tuned for that and be prepared to experience the war with me. Now, let's take a look at who these two Hezbollah terrorists were. Ismail served as a longtime senior official in the military wing of Hezbollah in several positions. The IDF said in a statement that his current rank is equivalent to the rank of a brigadier general. As part of his role, he was involved in promoting and planning the launches of rockets and anti-tank missiles towards the state of Israel from the coastal area of Lebanon. Also during the war, he organized and planned various terrorist plots against Israel. Referring to the assassination of Musafa Savari, the Radwan Force commander of the rocket and missile unit of the Western Sector, the IDF said that he was responsible for the planning and execution of many rocket-firing plans towards the Israeli territory. As part of his role, he was involved in promoting and planning the launches of rockets and missiles towards the State of Israel from the central and western sectors of Lebanon. It was also reported that Muhammad Ibrahim Fadala, an operative in Hezbollah's rocket and missile unit, was also neutralized in this attack. These guys won't be planning any rocket attacks on Israel anymore. And that's something we can all be grateful for. This is a good place for me to ask you to join us in spreading the truth by clicking the follow button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and share us on social media. Together, we can really make a difference. Now back to the news and taking a closer look at Iran's missile and UAV attack on Israel, from which Israel came out untouched and eliminated 99% of the attack. But I noticed something important that did not happen. Hezbollah did not fire a very large barrage of rockets to support the Iranian attack. Intelligence sources in the Middle East have assessed that Iran was disappointed by Hezbollah's involvement in the attack on Israel, which was tiny and even symbolic relative to the organization's capabilities. The barrages of rockets fired into northern Israel by Hezbollah on Saturday evening and into Sunday morning were not significantly greater than what they've been doing on a daily basis since the Hamas massacre began on October 7th. What can explain this? It seems that Hezbollah is afraid to hit Israel hard and I can tell you some of the very good reasons they have to feel this way. Israel has demonstrated to Hezbollah that within minutes of them launching a rocket attack, the IDF can locate and fire on the launching positions. This includes the launchers, but also the targeting radar, ammunition stockpiles, and other infrastructure related to the launchers. The weapons Iran has provided to Hezbollah are powerful but they have a large logistical footprint. 
They require large facilities to keep them operating. And once they fire, the IDF can track their location and destroy them. This is one reason why Hezbollah is unwilling to expose the firing positions of their missiles. They want to keep them in reserve in case the IDF sends a large ground force into Lebanon. Please continue to spread the truth with us and take an active part in supporting our work so we can create additional videos from Israel, from the ground, to you. Now I want to give you some in-depth analysis of the situation we're looking at. We usually view the military aspects of wars, but there are other aspects that we must keep in mind. These aspects include the economic costs of fighting, both the direct cost that countries pay for weapons and equipment, as well as the opportunity costs for loss of product and employment. Sometimes a country can be punished for an act of aggression by the imposition of economic sanctions. Foreign Minister Israel Katz said, that after the decision that took place in the European Union, there is a positive trend towards the adoption of sanctions against Iran regarding the missile project. But Iran's military is already heavily sanctioned. And the real progress here is that for the first time, there is also discussion about the expansion of sanctions against the proxy organizations. It's difficult to believe, but Iranian proxies include Hamas and Hezbollah raise large sums of money every year through phony charity organizations that operate openly and legally in Europe. Israel has been asking European governments to shut this down for years and it's time for these governments to listen. The news portals Axios has reported that the Americans are working on a new sanction against Iran. American Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that she will not hesitate to impose economic punishment on Tehran in response to an attack on Israel. We now have a united alliance of partners, she said. And that was not Iran's intention. According to Axios, this is a subtle message to Israel that there is more than one way to harm the Revolutionary Guards. In any case, after the Iranian attack and following his talks with the foreign ministers of France, Great Britain, Egypt, and other countries in the world, Foreign Minister Katz sent 32 letters to his counterparts from the European Union and other countries. The letters urged the imposition of sanctions on the Iranian Missile Project and the declaration of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps as a terrorist organization. This does not mean that Israel is not preparing to respond directly to the Iranian attack. Israel has decided to respond to the attack, but behind the scenes, there are still a series of discussions about how to do it and when. There are intense discussions between the Israeli security, diplomatic and political echelons, as well as with allies about the best way forward. And here at TBN Israel, we will keep a close watch on these discussions so we can keep you updated about them. Look, the situation is that Iran is behind Hamas, behind Hezbollah, and many others. But Israel is determined to defeat this evil coalition and defend ourselves and the entire civilized world. The most important thing we have is our readiness as citizens and as soldiers to serve a common purpose. This is powered by our faith in God, in our army, and in our people. This is the same spirit that continues before us and behind us and with help from God and our friends around the world, including you, we will win. Shifting our focus again to the Gaza Strip, counter-terrorism operations continue with the Division 162 being hard at work, eliminating terrorists and destroying terrorist infrastructure in the center of the Strip. As well, the soldiers of the Nahal Brigade's combat team continue their operations in cooperation with the Air Force and the 215th Fire Brigade's combat team. We here at TBN Israel will continue to report. Please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of the residents of the northern border of Israel and Lebanon. Let's pray that they will return to their homes. And the most important thing is to keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you for all your support and together 
we will win this war. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.